At first, I was gonna review both of these keyboards separately, but I knew that as soon as I had both of them together, it just didn't really make a lot of sense. So I decided to review both the Razer Huntsman V2 Analog Edition as well as the Wooting HE2. These are both analog keyboards that have a ton of different features and control that I wanna go over with you guys. And I also don't wanna make two long reviews and then make a comparison that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna review both of them at the same time and tell you which one is better between the two because uh, one of them is definitely better than the other. This video is sponsored by Custom Keys. Check out their site with some of these extremely unique custom cables with excellent color choices and combos you haven't seen anywhere else. After working with them and being a customer over the past year, I really have been enjoying the products quite a bit as you guys may have noticed on the channel. My personal favorites are the Rainbow Cable as well as the Blue Z Cable, but I find myself using the Plain Jane Black on Black Cable most often. Also, if you're in the market for a mouse pad to complete your desk setup, they also stock x-ray pad desk pads as well. Use code TMTSAVE at checkout for a discount, and if you live in the UK, the shipping is free. Thanks again to Custom Keys for being a longtime supporter of the channel, and I'm sure you guys will love their products too. I will have Custom Keys linked in the description below, so be sure to use code TMTSAVE at customkeys.net. So the Razer keyboard, let's go ahead and talk about this one first, because I feel like this is gonna be pretty quick. I'm not gonna talk about too much of the software features just yet, because we're gonna directly compare the software in just a bit, but this one, as far as the construction and build quality, it is pretty nice. You do have this aluminum top frame, but it's it's kind of thin aluminum, so it doesn't really get too cold to the touch, like a much thicker piece of aluminum would. And then you do also have these double shot PVT keycaps that Razer gives you, which is quite nice. You do have some media controls up here. So it's nice, you got a play, pause, fast forward, rewind button, as well as this dial for your volume and muting. And then you also get this magnetic wrist rest that also features RGB, and it does look pretty nice as well. And when you combine that with the flip out feet that are on the Huntsman Analog, it is a pretty comfortable typing and gaming experience. Like I could definitely game with the wrist rest like this at the tallest typing angle, but using a keyboard flat with the wrist rest, I just can't see myself doing. It doesn't really make a lot of sense and it does not feel comfortable at all in my opinion because your wrists are just too far elevated above the keyboard and it just does not feel comfortable at all when it's flat. Surprisingly, the RGB on the Razer keyboard is not as bright as its competitor, the Wooting in this case. One of the worst things about the Razer keyboard that I'll say is actually the way that you connect it to your PC. So you've got these two cables, one is a USB type A and the other is a USB type C. Why Razer did this, I'm really not entirely sure, but I absolutely hate the fact that they use two different connectors. USB Type-C is supposed to be a much faster connection and you're supposed to be able to get a little bit more power out of it as well. And I'm really surprised that they couldn't do all of this with just one USB-C cable. Like they could have said on the box, hey, you need one powerful USB Type-C port on your PC to be able to use the full functions of this keyboard, or they could even limit functions of the keyboard with just one cable, but give people the option option to use this keyboard without both cables but the fact that you can't remove the cable that kind of sucks and you got two of these huge thick braided cables that are pretty firm that is uh, just a really unfortunate situation for the Razer keyboard and I pretty much I gotta have this thing like thrown all the way across my desk because the uh, the USB extensions that I have they uh, don't have USB type C they just have the regular USB at least you do have USB pass through on the side of this but uh, other than that I mean it's just a little bit annoying that I have these two super thick USB cables that are different that I have to plug into my PC to be able to use this keyboard now the price on the Razer keyboard is about 250 dollars which is uh it, it's a kind it's kind of expensive it's kind of expensive to be honest like the keyboard does it feel nice and type nice yes but uh it is a little pricey it's a little pricey while i have the prices up right now let's go ahead and check out the options and the pricing of the wooden keyboard so it's on pre-order right now like i said this keyboard is not available just yet but uh you do have these lecker linear switches that the wooden keyboard does come with that we'll talk about in a little bit you have the option to get this keyboard without keycaps which saves you ten dollars off of the base price the base price in the keyboard is 185 dollars so without keycaps it's 175 but if you get these double shot abs keycaps which I do not recommend these things are trash you guys will see in a second but don't get these base abs keycaps as a trash just get the pbt option or get the no keycaps at all and use your own keycaps you do have the option to add a wrist rest for 29 dollars, and that'll bring you up to about 225 dollars. and this is again a pre-order so it does manage to be quite a bit cheaper than the razor keyboard by including all you know, those pbt keycaps 
and uh, the wrist rest too if you want the exact specs for spec. To be honest, I do think that the wrist rest that the Wooden gives you is pretty nice. Um, is it worth $30? And it is just a silicone wrist rest, but it is decent. Let's take a look at it real quick, actually. So here we have the Wooden keyboard with the wrist rest, and I do like the fact that this wrist rest does have a bit more of a lower profile compared to the Razer. That Razer wrist rest was just really high, so the typing angle, regardless of the angle of the keyboard, was just really, really tall, and I feel like I had to kind of T-Rex my hands to reach the keys. But using this, even when the Wooden keyboard is flat, it's not a bad experience. It's definitely more more usable than the Razer keyboard using that flat with the wrist rest. The Wooden keyboard does also have adjustable feet. This one only has one angle of adjustability. And with the wrist rest, it is a lot more usable. Like this would be my desired angle of typing. If I'm gonna use the wrist rest, even without the wrist rest, I do prefer to use the taller option for the keyboard. It just feels a lot more natural to me. One thing that's pretty surprising is just the fact that this keyboard is super bright. So that's pretty interesting how bright this keyboard was able to get. Now, these are the ABS keycaps and I'm not the biggest fan of them like they just feel kind of cheap and they do collect hand oils as well but uh, I just don't like these these feel just like the keycaps that Steel Series uses on their Apex Pro for $180 and I'm just not a fan even if you get the base keyboard for $185 because it's a full-size keyboard uh, I, I just could not do it I just couldn't do it I just do not like the feel of these cheap ABS keycaps. At least on the Razer, they give you double shot ABS keycaps, and these do collect a minor amount of hand oils, but largely they do feel really good and they are really durable as well. Like you have to have like gunk on your hands for the hand oils and stuff to get like on these keycaps. I'm not gonna say they're GMK quality, but it's gonna take a lot of use for these keycaps to start to shine. The biggest advantage that the Wooden keyboard has over the Razer keyboard before we dive into the software of both of them is the fact that the Wooden keyboard uses these switches from Gateron. These are Lecker switches that have a 60 gram actuation force. I'm not entirely sure what the actuation force of the Razer keyboard is. These 60 gram switches feel a ton better than the Razer ones. The Razer switches, I noticed that after a while, after about a half hour or so of gaming, my fingers started to get a little bit fatigued where I don't get that with the Wooden keyboard. I don't get that at all. These feel a lot lighter and a lot more usable than the Razer switches. The fact that the Wooden keyboard is also hot swappable so you are able to pull out these little lecker switches one of the biggest things that we've been complaining about on a lot of razor keyboards and a lot of steel series keyboards is the fact that we aren't able to modify the stabilizers to make them sound better well now you can and if you want to go ahead and pull out your stabilizers and clip them and lube them before you go ahead and put them back in you definitely can but since i haven't checked out the bottom of these stabilizers these actually are not bad these stabilizers are indeed flat so that's really nice because you don't need to do any kind of clipping at all. And you can throw a little bit more lube on there if you want to. Like the factory lube that they have on there, it's not bad, but I definitely think that this keyboard would most likely benefit from having some stabilizer pads on the PCB so that the uh, stabilizers are not like directly contacting the uh, PCB. And it should make the bottom out a little bit less harsh, but definitely adding a little bit more factory lube and doing those stab pads is gonna be a huge improvement to these stabilizers on this keyboard. So let's take a quick look at the software of both of these keyboards because they do both have some pretty interesting features. Some of them are gonna be more useful than others, but uh, I do like a couple of these features that the Wooting has over the Razer. So number one, both keyboards do feature adjustable actuation point, but the Wooting has a little bit more range in comparison to the Razer. So you can go as low of actuation as 0.1 millimeter. So basically, as soon as you touch the key, it's actuating, like that's insane or you can go down to four millimeters to have very, very committed and bottomy out and crazy deep dock presses to have that actuation of that key. If you don't wanna press G until the absolute last second and you can set it per key, so that's pretty cool. So you can tap on a key or click on an individual key up here to change individual actuation. And then you have this other feature called rapid trigger that I've used a little bit on and off, but basically it moves the reset points so that if you're spamming a key, you should be able to more accurately hit it more than once as quickly as possible, which is pretty decent. 
I've used it and I wasn't really in love with the feature, so I just prefer to have a static actuation point that I don't have to worry about like, all right, so my first press is gonna be 0.5 millimeters and then the next press is gonna be 0.2 millimeters, for example, because that's how it works. It will dynamically move your reset point so that if you don't go all the way back up with your key switch stroke, it'll reset that actuation as soon as it starts to sense movement and when you press down again, it gives you a little bit sooner actuation. Again, in theory, it's fine, but personally, I don't really see too much use in that but the game that you'll probably see the most use in that is probably fortnite then you have tachyon mode which i have been using which basically it optimizes your keyboard for the absolute fastest input speed and this i do actually notice a very slight difference i feel like this feature is very comparable to like an 8000 hertz polling rate or anything higher really than 1000 hertz polling rate this is just changing the optimization and the amount of input that your computer can read and basically basically makes it as quick as possible. So this is something that's comparable to something like that that you can do over a much slower speed of USB. Also on the Wooting, you have digital profiles as well as analog profiles. So you can click on any of these buttons and map them to a joystick command. So if you hit gamepad mapping, you can change any of these keys to mimic anything from a gamepad. So that's kind of nice. Like if you want to use both hands to play like a controller game, you can. I find that kind of weird. But the thing that you're going to find is that most games do not support both mouse and keyboard as well as joystick inputs at the same time. And really any FPS game is not gonna let you do it because it's almost like cheating because that's how a lot of cheaters like on a console back in the day with like the Zim 4s and all that crazy stuff would use keyboard and mouse and also get aim assist. That's why they won't let you use both inputs at the same time because your computer and the game can't recognize, you know, hey, are you trying to use a controller and use aim assist or do you want raw movement and input from keyboard and mouse? So um, this, this implementation of the analog controls, uh, it doesn't really go very far for me because there's not really a lot of games that support it. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that would just be kind of weird and it would be kind of sus. I feel like that'd be too easy to manipulate as far as cheaters go, but that's why game developers don't enable it in game. I digress. Let's talk about the Razer one. Talking about customization for the Razer, obviously you have your different Razer lighting effects, your brightness, blah, 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 all that good stuff. That's just normal Razer stuff. But what we want is here. So we got quick remapping. This is basically the same thing as the Wooting where you combine controller joystick commands to your keyboard and your WASD keys. But this is just a quick way to bind WASD to the left joystick for movement and then you can bind the Q and E keys to the uh, left and right trigger so I, I don't really know why anybody would do that. With the Huntsman analog you can click on individual keys and set individual actuation points which is not as wide as the Wooden keyboard so you do have 1.5 millimeters or 3.6 millimeters not 0.1 millimeters and up to 4 millimeters so I mean that is uh could be a really significant advantage and on top of that the fact that the spring weight on the razor definitely feels a lot more stiff and a little bit more forceful uh, than the wooden ones. The wooden ones are really easy to use. The razor ones, eh, they're a little stiff, but you can sync this actuation across all your keys or you can uh, do it per key. On the Razer keyboard, you also have this function called Hypershift, which basically is kind of like a hotkey where you can change one key to do another thing while you hold another key, but it's, it's kind of like a macro. I don't really see much use in that myself, uh, but where I would definitely see a huge benefit in that is like, let's say that you had, I don't know, a smaller keyboard than full size. That is the biggest problem with both of these keyboards is that they feature all this analog goodness and a lot of really good features that would be very good for competitive gaming. But these are full size keyboards. These things are huge. I don't know why the full size versions came out before like a 60 or 65% or 10 keyless even. I would see how this makes a ton of sense in a much smaller form factor because the people that are gonna be interested in this type of technology, regardless if it's from Razer or from Wooting or from SteelSeries or from whoever, the biggest reasons why anyone would wanna use this type of keyboard is probably gonna be for a competitive setting. If it's not a competitive setting, I mean, you would be using both hands on a keyboard for analog control, which to me doesn't really make much sense. Like if I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna use a controller for genuine analog input. But other than the uh, raw input and be able to do half press keys and get a different function or move slower and stuff like that, like I see the benefit and the appeal of analog when it comes to the speed of the actuation of the keys. That's the biggest draw point and selling point of this 
technology and I feel like both of these two methods with the massive form factors is not really the best use cases for this type of technology. Between the two keyboards, I definitely think that the Wooting is the better keyboard of the two and that's the one that I would personally buy. I would buy it without the keycaps. I would buy it with the wrist rest because I feel like I would use that occasionally. But what I'm really waiting for is their 60% that they have announced that is gonna be coming out, I believe in 2022. So I definitely will be more interested to check out that version of the keyboard because to be honest, once that comes out and is available and it's using the same Lecker switches, and as long as it maintains that hot swap functionality that I like so much on this board, I'm pretty sure that that board is gonna be the next best thing compared to the Apex Pro, the Razer Huntsman Analog, and that wooden keyboard is gonna be the best out of the three. And really the entire Huntsman range I feel like would be useless after that wooing 60% comes out. So I hope that that keyboard is equally as great, if not better than the current wooden keyboard. I'm not too sure if there's foam inside it, but if there isn't foam, I feel like adding some neoprene to really isolate that sound of the switches would be a really nice addition. And since the switches are hot swap as well, technically you probably could pull them apart somehow, some way and lube them and make them even more smooth but you kind of don't need to because they are really smooth stock. I'm pretty impressed with what Wooting is doing with that keyboard and how it easily beats the Huntsman for me and even the Apex Pro in some areas. But the Apex Pro, see, I don't really want to include that one in this comparison because I feel like it's just a little bit too far gone and the Wooting is so far ahead of the Apex Pro that I would rather use the Wooting keyboard once it's in a smaller form factor. But that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel as well. I will have both the Razer and the Wooten keyboard. I even throw the Apex Pro down there for you guys that are still nostalgic about that board. I'll throw all three of them in the description below so you can check them out and compare them for yourself. But um, honestly speaking, I think the Wooting is the best deal out of the three. Again, super interested to check out the 60% once that is available. So definitely look out for that video on the channel later on. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.